With me now, I should say, is the Minister for Legal Migration, Tom Persglove. Yes. 64 seats, according to the latest MRP. I mean, this is a complete collapse. Well, there's only one poll that counts, and that's the one on Thursday. And I'm spending a lot of time talking to colleagues of mine who say that in their constituencies it feels a lot closer on the ground, that, for example, reform seemed to be eating into the Labour vote. And there's been polling that's been produced in the last couple of days that indicates that that's the case. So it's still a 19-point lead for Labour, though, even in the polling that's showing that. Well, polls are polls, aren't they? And as the Prime Minister has been saying, and I think he's right to make this point, that if those polls are to be believed, that there is this risk of a Labour supermajority come Friday morning, and people need to reflect upon that choice and what that means for the country over the course of the next five years and beyond, if that's how it goes. But we're in it to win. We're working hard. You know, on my, in my own area in Corby and East Lampshire, we're working hard for every vote, day in, day well, out. Be careful, Brilliant team of talking about of your course, uh, but, but, but everybody, you know, candidates, small parties are working hard for every vote, and we're no different. You know, you say that you believe that you're in it to win it. It doesn't feel like that, I've got to say. You know, the Prime Minister going to campaign in seats that have been Conservative for 100 years, you yourself and the Prime Minister talking about the message before the election being don't give Labour a supermajority. I mean, that is basically saying just vote Conservative so that we lose, but just don't get completely wiped out. It's not exactly, you know, really that... You're enthusiastic, is it? Well, in fairness, you guys in the media have spent a lot of time in recent weeks talking about these polls with no, these you big guys are talking about the Labour majority. Leads. That is but, not but, coming from us. But you'll the appreciate Prime what... The Prime Minister tweeted it two hours ago. But you'll appreciate why, when that's the narrative, we have to engage in that debate. And there's choices that no, voters you're have engaged in that on debate Thursday. Because you're looking at the same numbers as us. That is, that's why. No, Come on, let's, let's be honest. That's that what it is. If those polls are to be believed, then that is the prospect that the country will have on Friday. And people need to go into this election casting their votes with that in mind. And, you know, YouGov have said, for example, that 130,000 people nationally who are thinking about voting reform, if they were to vote Conservative, that would have a material impact on the outcome of this election. And I think these are the choices, these are the things that people need to balance in the days ahead. And it would be a bit weird, I think you'd be asking me why it was that we weren't engaging in the sort of polling and the narrative that emerges from that, were I not to be on your programme talking about it. I spoke to um, your fellow minister, Steve Baker, uh, last night. He called elements of the Conservative campaign embarrassing. Uh, he seemed to concede the election, saying that people would guffaw if he came on the programme so that the Conservatives could win. And then he seemed to sort of semi-launch his own leadership bid as well. I think we can just have a quick listen to what he had to say. You're not ruling out a leadership run, are you? If I would not rule it out. If Look, the stars aligned. The reality is that my colleagues have sent for me before the referendum, after the referendum, during COVID and over net zero. And on all four occasions, I've led actual MPs to a great degree of, degree of success. And I wouldn't mind the chance to do it again. I mean, that's a couple of days before the election. A Conservative minister kind of launching his own bid. I'm very fond of Steve, but I think all of us as Conservative politicians, you know, sitting MPs who obviously are candidates now, but people who are aspiring to become MPs at this election should be focused on one job, which is to articulate the message on doorsteps over the course of the coming days and that choice that people have on Thursday. This isn't about any of us as individuals. It's not about any of our individual aspirations. What this is about is campaigning for a Conservative government come Friday and to win as many seats as we possibly can as a party. I mean, you could say at least he's been open about it, at least he's been honest about it, rather than the kind of shadow campaigns that are going on in the background. I haven't really got much time for posturing. I think there's a job to be done and voters expect us to be talking about them, the issues that they care about at this election. And again, that choice, that really stark choice. You know, if you want to squander the progress that we've made in relation to the economy and things are beginning to get a bit easier in terms of energy bills and hopefully mortgage rates, obviously the clear choice around immigration at this election, Let's but also things like, you know, changing the franchise. These are big strategic okay. things Let's... that will affect future generations in terms of our democracy. Let's talk about uh, immigration, shall we? Because your record after 14 years on immigration uh, and getting down to the levels that the Conservative Party and many of your voters to be comfortable with has been, frankly, pretty poor. You know, it's been nice weather recently, so we've seen lots of people arriving on small boats, over 13,000 this year alone. Every one of these people, as far as I can tell, joins the queue to go to Rwanda. So how, how many people are in the queue now to be deported to Rwanda? So the scheme in relation to Rwanda is an uncapped scheme. Um, the last sort of set of figures that I saw was that there are 85,000 asylum claims that are still not decided. 
But the point is that so, you so, needed so just, just to be, just, just to be clear, so that means that effectively 85,000 people are kind of in the queue to go to Rwanda. But effectively. consider a number of those people will be eligible for relocation to Rwanda. Now, but I would argue you need a deterrent in order I'm just to be able to get have my a head credible around answer on illegal migration. I'm I just, I just trying to get my head around this. And that's on the ballot you know, paper Tens of thousands of people, you know, none of them can have their asylum claim processed under the scheme until they get to Rwanda. So what, they're just kind of sitting in taxpayer-funded accommodation until that happens? I mean, the Public Accounts Committee reckons Rwanda will cost half a billion pounds, average cost of a new hospital, by the way. But that's not to send, you know, 85,000 people to Rwanda. That's to send a maximum of, of what, 5,700 people? I just can't get my head around this. It, it, it feels ridiculous. Well, what do we know? We know that deterrents work. When you look at the targeted work no, we've done with about Albert, tens no, of no, thousand no, people... Let me unpack the point, Sophie, because... When uh, am I, have I got this wrong? No, the point is that the Rwanda policy itself, through the deterrent, should help us to put out of business those evil criminal gangs. Now, what the Labour Party keep talking about are That's things not we're what I'm already asking. I'm asking about the number of people you who are currently it. waiting to be sent to Rwanda to have their claims processed, and basically we're all paying for that. Well, the answer to that is people should vote Conservative on Thursday so that we can start sending those flights in July, having changed None the law, having so switched far. those avenues of appeal off through the legislation that we've just passed. People have got a really clear choice on illegal migration. You can vote Conservative and start sending flights in July, put the criminal gangs out of business, and let's not forget that these heinous individuals responsible for organising this take people's lives in their hands, take their money, put them in unseaworthy vessels and send them to sea. But you cannot have a credible answer on illegal migration if you've not got a destination to be able to send people to. Now, you cannot sit down with the Ayatollahs and talk about a returns agreement. Now, um, I know that you want to talk about the election and not talk about the future of the Conservative Party, but uh, there's going to be an awful lot of people who are going to be thinking about, I guess, the soul of the Conservative Party. Where does Conservatism go in the years ahead? What's your own view? You know, should you be kind of taking to the right, looking at the people who are perhaps tempted by reform? Should you be fighting from the centre ground? What, what do you believe? I think you've got to be on where Mrs Thatcher used to call the common ground. You've What's got that? to be where the majority of the British people are in order to be successful in elections. I would argue that what that means, in truth, is people want to see lower taxes. I think all of us as Conservatives can agree on that. We want to see controlled borders, both legal and illegal, you know, getting numbers down, dealing with that illegal migration issue. I think all of us as Conservatives can agree on that. I think those are the sorts of issues that will define the Conservative offer in the years ahead. I think we've got a good answer on those issues at this election. But as we move forward, those will be the things that I'll be campaigning on and that colleagues will be campaigning on. And I think we have a lot of commonality and common purpose as Conservative politicians and Conservative members and activists across the country in wanting to deliver on those things. And I think they matter to the majority of the British people. Now, people who are tempted to go off and vote reform because they think that's the outcome they'll get, action on those issues, actually, you're putting all that at risk because that is not where the Labour Party okay. stand on those key issues for the country. Uh, great to have you in the studio. Thank you Lovely very much. Indeed. Tom Blair, Perth Love there speaking to us.